Yeah, y'all, it's your boy eBay Fight Predictions in the building. I know a little bit of a new setup, but I had to make some, you know, quick changes a little bit, you know, in a different area right now currently. So it is what it is. I asked one of my homies so <laughs> if I could borrow his room for a sec. Uh, I, luckily, I had my MacBook on me, uh, which was a lucky thing. But, yeah, you, you already know we're here for UFC Vegas, I think 47. Uh, Jack Hermanson versus uh, Sean Strickland. Uh, and yeah, man, can't wait to break these down. A really, really good card. Oh yeah, don't forget to follow me. I, I, start, I forgot to start doing this. I said I was gonna do it, but don't forget to f start following me on my Twitter and my Instagram. All those links will be down below in the description box. I will make that an initiative to say that in the beginning of all my full card prediction videos. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, really, really good card here. I like it a lot, and uh, man, I can't wait for it. Um, but yeah, man, let's talk about the first fight of the night. Um, Malcolm Gordon versus Denise Bonder. Uh, Denise, I remember this guy. Uh, I actually did a tape study on him a while back. He's, I forgot who he's supposed to fight, but he was fight. Uh, he was gonna fight on Fight Island. I remember that, and I guess this fight got pulled. Uh, Malcolm Gordon. I mean, respect him for being Davidson's. I think older or little brother. Uh, I think I'm gonna say a little because he fights like his little brother. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean. You know, it was sloppy. It was bad. Both of them looked bad in there. It was nothing to be proud of. Bonder is, I mean, good everywhere. Well-rounded fighter. Uh, Gordon, um, he has really one of the weirdest chins I've seen in a minute. Um, I mean, the lack of durability is just almost like, it's so crazy. It's like, you think it's not real. Like, how can you be that chinny, right? Like, he, he, like you literally can't take a punch. But, I mean, I guess losing to Sue, you know... You know, Mujiri or I forgot his I remember I learned how to say his name, but I haven't seen him in a minute, so I, I forgot. But Sue made him look really, really bad. But Sue, I guess, is a really, really good striker, so maybe that's what it was. But man, um, even against uh, Figueredo, man, he looked like with every teep kick and every teep kick to the body, even like he looked like he was ready to fold. But uh, Bonder by decision is uh, my pick, and uh, yeah, uh, U Ukraine. Uh, is gonna get the W today, <laughs> but it is. I do like his nickname X. So I will give him that, Malcolm Gordon. You got a nice nickname. You are from Canada. I don't hate Canada. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about another fight. Uh, next up, Danilo Marquez, my boy Danilo. I like Danilo, but I ain't picking you today. Uh, versus Jalton Almeida. I really like Danilo Marquez, man. He really came up big for me against the fucking Mike Davis, man. And he, I, I do like him. Uh, a lot, and I really want to stick with him here over Jalton Almeida, but I think Jalton Almeida, I think is a better grappler than him, and I think it'll be a battle of grappling. Uh, Danilo's a really good grappler, but he looked, I mean, horrible against Kennedy, man. Kennedy weathered the storm and then just beat him, um, uh, and, you know, basically in the third round finished him. It was just such a shameful performance by, you know, by Danilo, and I think he can come back from this um, but obviously a part of me wants to root for Danilo Marquez here, but I think Jalton Almeida, from what I saw in his contender series fight, he looked really, really strong, really good wrestler, uh, really good jiu-jitsu, um, you know, and obviously just a, probably on every goddamn steroid in the book, if I'm being honest, no shame in it, if you ain't get caught, I mean, hey, it is what it is, you get, do what you gotta do, actually, there is a lot of shame in it, I take, <laughs> I don't mean that, <laughs> I don't mean it. I was just joking. <laughs> it's not good to take steroids, kids. But um, but yeah, man. I mean, Danilo Marquez, um, ah, man, he gasses out, man. Real talk. Unless he's dominating, he, he if there's any kind of adversity, he's gonna gas out. Uh, I I just fought, saw my boy fucking uh Deron Caldwell just do that in Bellator uh against I forgot the guy's name, but it was the last Bellator card that just came up and it was just so hard to watch. It was like I, I literally almost had like ready to th punch my goddamn macbook for why for making me watch that shit but um and i think that's just Danilo's problem he's gonna gas out i think almeida's gonna take advantage of it and i thought he, he did pretty good against the russian guy he fought uh, nasruddin uh nasruddinov or whatever his name choked him out in the second round so um yeah he is i mean Danilo's long though he is pretty long and does have the reach well he doesn't have that's crazy Danilo's like three inches taller than him and doesn't have the reach advantage actually almeida Wow, that's really interesting. 79 to 77. I didn't even see that. That's really cool. <laughs> and also, yeah, I guess another reason why he's going to win. I mean, the, he's not short, but the shorter guy in this matchup with the taller reach is a very, very hard matchup. That's why Volkanovski is such a hard matchup for these guys. Because, like, you know, Brian Ortega can be taller than him, but 
Volk actually had longer arms than him, and that's what makes him kind of like a real hard stylistic matchup uh, to deal with. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking Dalton Almeida by third-round submission. I think they're just going to tussle. I think it's going to be kind of fun in the first two rounds. I think the scrambles might be entertaining. Might. All right, don't, don't, <laughs> don't take my word for it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, I think it's going to be entertaining for two rounds, and I think uh, Danilo is going to break, and Dalton's going to submit him in the third round. I don't know what he's going to submit him with. Sorry for the interruption, but I, I was saying, um, he you know, he could get a ground and pound finish because maybe Dino is actually kind of hard to submit, but uh, but I'm, I'm gonna take Almeida by third round submission. That, that I think that'd be cool for him. Um, next fight, uh, Alexa Davis versus uh, Juliana Stardenko. Uh, yeah, some more home in May. Uh, Alexa Davis trains at Oakland, so I, y'all already know. I uh, gotta go support my Oakland girl. She's not from Oakland. She's from Canada, but she's been training out of Oakland for a minute. I, I recently found out. I actually thought that was kind of dope. But, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna support the hometown girl here. Uh, Alexa Davis is a better grappler than her. Um, uh, Storenko, I don't know what she does in there. Uh, she's from Lithuania, uh, which is, I, I guess, cool. But, um, you know, Julia Villa just completely embarrassed her. Against Yana Kuniskai, they had, like... I mean, like, people complain about hugging when they're, you know, when people are actually wrestling, right? And I don't have a problem with wrestling, but what her and Yana Kunskai, I know you can call it a clinch fest, but, like, they were le- legitimately having a competitive hugging match. Like, I, I've, I they literally, I, I mean, you could say they were going for some trips and takedowns, but, like, like oh, my God, like, they... Man, they, they were really, really hugging. <laughs> like, I swear, I got to go rewatch it. Like, like man, it was wild. Um, so, I'm going to take Alexa Davis here by decision. <laughs> uh, in the home MMA bout here. But, yeah, I'm going to take Alexa Davis here. Uh, Jason Witt versus Philip Rowe. Um, Philip Rowe versus Jason Witt. Man, both guys are actually some in some entertaining fights in their last one. So, I, I think this is actually going to be all right in a decent matchup. Um I'm probably going to take... I'm going to take Philip Rowe here um, by, T- T- by TKO in the second round. I think he's he's a really good grappler. I didn't like what he did in sh- submission underground wearing that fucking Jordan rash guard and then going out there and getting fucking treated like a hoe. <laughs> Pre- <laughs> like wearing that Jordan stuff and just go. Man, it was bad. It was bad for, uh, for Philip Rowe. But Jason Witt, man, I mean, respect to him. Uh, probably one of the biggest dog wins of last year versus Brian Barbarena. Actually, like, that win over Brian Barbarena made me lose so much respect for Barbarena. Like, I lost a lot of respect for Barbarena. But it was a great fight. It's actually probably one of them. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a fight of the year contender, but it had, like, one of the rounds of the year at least. Like, they were just, like, Jason Witt would get rocked, and then Brian's so much so close to finishing him, and then Jason Witt gets the takedown, and it's, like, it's just it's craziness. But, I mean, Philip Rowe has really good jiu-jitsu, really good boxing. Uh, I know he looked really bad against Gabe Green, but Gabe Green just exposed him for not, I guess, not knowing how to check a kick. Uh, <laughs> and that's what really happened. And, you know, you live and you learn. Uh, Philip Rowe is actually kind of cool. Um, is, is the guy's, what's the, I forgot the guy's name from Street, Street Beefs. Um, the guy with the tattoos, man, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But it's basically how I got introduced. I think it's like Mighty Mouse, or not Mighty Mouse. Is it Mighty Mouse? Something like that. It's a dude, like, swole dude with the, does, like, the bare knuckle stuff on YouTube. He's always doing, like, the boxing stuff and, uh, you know, fucking, um, does street beefs. I, I actually saw, I, I was more, I forgot his name. I, I knew him really good on YouTube. I used to watch a lot of his shit on YouTube when I was young. And, uh, that's how I actually got introduced to Philip Rowe because he was doing a sparring thing on YouTube with Philip Rowe and he I think he titled it getting completely destroyed by Philip Rowe or some shit like that uh or MMA's uh, up, up and coming superstar Philip Rowe so I saw that Philip looked really good he, Philip has some good hands man good to I, I give him that he does actually have some decent hands uh so yeah I'm gh take Rowe by second round TKO I think he weathers the storm with the grappling and uh breaks Jason Witt in the second round and he looked really good in his last fight too I was really happy that he did that to the Kosei brother but um yeah uh, next fight, Mark Andre Barriott versus, oh man, I, I should have searched how to say this guy's name, Chidi, oh man, I know my Nigerian people are gonna fucking kill me for this, Chidiki, uh, Nijikawani, I think Nijikawani, <laughs> Nijikawani, I'm gonna assume I'm saying his name right, legit dude, I mean, re- I mean, with all due respect, he is legit, um, 
I mean, he honestly his only issue is that he really can't grapple. Um, but he has legit knockout power. Really good, really good striker. Really good uh, Muay Thai. Uh, Mark Andre Barriott has looked renewed in his last two fights. Joining Sanford MMA was probably one of the best things he ever did for his career. He's really really durable. Um, and you know the Dolce fight he had. I mean, I gained a lot of respect. Even Dolce gained a lot of respect. He ended up switching over to Sanford MMA, now training with Mark Andre Barry, which is fucking hilarious. Uh, kind of cool. Um, Ninja Kawani, I mean, he does have a really big reach advantage here. Uh, he's a really good striker. But, you know, I've seen him fight in Bellator. I, fought, I saw him fight against Korshkov and John Salter. Um, you get him down, he, he drowns. You know, it's it's basically that's what it is. You you stand on the feet with him, it's it's not. I don't think Mark A. Andre is really durable, but I could see him getting lit up for three rounds if he just decides to not use his brain and doesn't get a takedown. But uh power bar, I think um by decision here, two one. I think it'll be close in the first round. Maybe uh Ninja Kawani gets it. And I you know, I thought he looked really good on contender series. Real real talk, real talk. I wanna just wanna say that. And I'm been happy for Ninja Kawani and how, how he's kind of came through. But, um, yeah, I think this is Mark Andre Barry's fight. Uh, hopefully, Ninja Kawani can get a different matchup and he can show off his striking. He's a really good striker. I always give him that. But, um, yeah, take the guy down. It's over. <laughs> but, yeah, I got to go with Mark Andre Barry here um, by decision. Hakeem Daudu versus my boy Mike Trezone. Man, Mike Trezone um, is a really, really good fighter. Ha Hakeem's actually a really good fighter. And these guys really... Actually, I don't know if Hakeem's a good fighter. I don't like Hakeem, but he is a good fighter. As much as I might not like the guy. Um, these guys match up really well. Both guys, I, I, would, I would assume, they consider themselves Muay Thai specialists. I would say Hakeem's more of the Muay Thai fighter out of the two. Uh, I mean, he, <laughs> he legit, I think, has Muay Thai experience. Uh, Mike own um, really, really good fighter at a, a Tiger Showman's uh, gym. Um, I forgot where he was training originally. But... Um, yeah, he's he's made a really good jump to Tiger Showman's and has looked amazing. You know him training with those guys like Shane Burgos and Lyman Good and just those really good fighters over there. Um, but yeah, I mean he had a really good performance against Ludovic Klein. I thought I know some people said it was a robbery. I didn't see it that way. I, he might have won all three rounds. He pressured him. Uh, I know fucking Klein went to the wrestling, but Klein is the striker, right? So if you're you're the striker in the matchup and you're going to the wrestling. It kind of to me means that you're almost folding a little bit, or you're you're knowing you're losing. You're gonna have to change it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ludovic had some cool takedowns. It is what it is. I thought Trezone's pressure uh, was really good. That's the thing about Tiger Showman's uh, gym. They just have so much pressure fighters. Uh, sometimes you know they kind of put their chins out there a little too much. That's one thing I don't like. But if you're durable, you're durable, so you can kind of get away with it. I really like, and he's the tough winner. People forget that out of the DC. Um, and Stipe won that they did uh, for the first one. The greatest uh, the, the greatest fight at the trilogy. The first DC Stipe fight. My favorite one. <laughs> the, other, the other two were... I don't remember those. You know, I, I didn't look at those. I didn't see those. <laughs> but um, my true zone is really, really good. Hakeem Dawoodu, man. Even though in defeat against Mozar Evluev. Had a really good moment in the third round. Rocked Mozar Evluev. But got completely dominated. Mozart looked like a goddamn Olympian in there. Hakim Dawoodu does not have any takedown defense. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. But his takedown defense looked horrible in there. But it's Mozart ever left. So maybe he's just going to make you look like that. But um, I think Mike Trezon might get the upset victory here. He, he does have a bit of a reach disadvantage. But it's only by one. I think the pressure is going to be really, really good. Hakeem has power. That's really what it comes down to. But I, I like Mike Jones' chances here. I think he's a really good pressure fighter. He could go for some wrestling. You never know. He might mix it in. But um, I just like Mike Jones in this spot. I think he's a really well-rounded fighter. And uh, yeah, I, and he's long. And man, I just I don't know. I just I have a good feeling about Mike taking this. I don't know why. I wanted to pick him against Ludovic Klein, man. I really did. And a fucking, my goddamn brain wouldn't allow me to do it. So I'm going to take Mike Trezone here. Um, next fight, Miles John versus John Castaneda. Um, really dull fight here, man. John, Both guys coming off from pretty good KO victories. But John, not John, Mike, Miles John takes the fucking cake. What he did to Dos Santos, man. Oh, my fucking God. I, did, that was, oh, he murdered him. Uh, it was murdered. You know, John Castaneda is obviously coming off a pretty good victory over Eddie Wineland. So that was good. Uh, he's 
His last fight before that, though, was against Nathaniel Wood. Lost that. And uh, he beat Rojo, which is actually a pretty good win via arm triangle. So he has some decent wins. But I think Miles John, man, what he did to fucking, what's that guy's name? Kevin Natividad. Dude has, has just been on this knockout streak. I think John Castaneda is actually somewhat durable. And I'm going to take Miles John by decision. I think he's just going to outwork this dude. He's, I think it's going to be a really good fight. Might be fight of the night. These guys come to scrap. They go in there. They go for it. Uh, they, you know, they put on pressure. I think it's going to be a good fight. But um, Miles John, I think, is the side here, man. I really, really do, man. Um, he might be dealing with a, you know, reach disadvantage. But um, this dude, he's just a fucking tank, man. You know, and uh, his last loss was to, was to Mario Batista. And Mario, I mean, I don't know. He's a weird one. Uh, I think he got caught against Trevin Jones. Um, I still think Mario Batista is actually pretty good. Uh, and I also he got caught up with the mullet curse. You, y'all remember the mullet curse? It got some people out there. It got my boy Jimmy Crew uh, and Brandon Allen sadly back to back. The mullet curse killed him. So um, you know it is what it is. But luckily my boy Ricky Simone ended that mullet nonsense. But uh, yeah, I think Batista is a really good fighter. So I, I think he's gonna come back from that. Uh, and I don't think Miles John should get any fucking slack for losing to him and i think just john's faster than uh john castaneda and man he's i'm just what he did to dos santos was fucking insane Uh, so i i think he gets this done by decision though i don't think he knocks castaneda out but i think miles john by decision um next fight uh julian arosa versus steven peterson my fucking boy um man this is a hard one um I think no matter what, Julian Rose is going to fucking get it. But um, I just don't know how. Uh, he's a he's a finisher, man. This guy's a finisher. He's a he's a legit finisher. His last five fights were all finishes. Either either he got finished or he finished the other guy, right? Um, I thought he looked so good against Charles Jordan, man. I picked him. Um, everyone called me crazy. Charles Jordan, this and that, whatever. Uh, Julian Rose is the fucking man. He broke my heart, though, when Choi knocked him out. So, it is what it is. It goes off and on. But, um, Choi was a really, really good striker. I think Julian Rose is a better striker than Steven Peterson. Really good. And I fuck with Steven Peterson. You beat that dumbass Chase Hooper. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I'm not a Chase Hooper fan. <laughs> um, and I was super happy he got it done. It was one of my dog picks. But, um, and everyone just being... Like, weren't making sense by picking Chase here. I don't get it. I think it was just for the joke, right? But um, I think Julian Rosa, he's just the better fighter overall. Uh, I think he has the better boxing. Um, I think he might have a speed advantage. He puts on good pressure. Um, and I think if he gets it to the ground, he should he, he could win it. But, um, yeah, Arosa by decision. The only thing I, I worry about Arosa is his chin. I think it's not that he has a bad chin. I just think he... Kind of takes a little too much damage. If he was a little more defensively aware, I think uh, he wouldn't be in so many fucking highlight knockouts. But man, uh, the guy came back after like that three fight skid, um, and man, he fucking killed that Woodson weirdo. <laughs> like I fucking hate Sean Woodson. <laughs> I was so happy. Like I picked like when I first saw Sean Woodson, and then I saw Julian Rosa. Like I bro, I picked Julian Rosa so fast. Like fuck that dude, Sean Woodson. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. But um but yeah man, I think Julian Rosa gets the decision victory here, man. Uh I just don't know if he can finish Steven Pearson. Pearson's pretty, pretty durable. So I would like to see him finish uh <laughs> fucking Peterson, but yeah, I'm gonna take a Rosa by decision. Um next fight, uh oh man, the tough finale we were supposed to get, uh I think uh, on the summer, right? Brian Battle versus uh Trishan Gore. Um it's a hard one for me. I I was actually gonna pick Gore by first round KO, but man, I re- I really do like Gore, man. Th- that he has real knockout power, but Brian Battle is like really really durable. It's really durable. Um, and I mean he leaves himself you know wide open in there, but he's a long rangey fighter. Uh, the Petroski, right? That's his name. The the Petroski victory really shocked me when I was watching Tough. I was like, "What? He beat that guy?" <laughs> uh, I thought Petroski was gonna win the whole entire thing. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna take Brian Battle by third round TKO. I mean, I really like Gore. I, like guys, I really do. His story really hit me. Uh, his story of perseverance uh, really hit me different. And man, it almost shed, you know, I don't cry a lot, but uh, oh, 
I ain't gonna lie, tear almost came out my eye for the kid. Uh, I really do hope the best for him, but uh, you know, I think Mr. Vicious is gonna try to finish Brian Battle. I think he might actually knock him down in the first round, and with a lot of uh, Brian Battle's opponents, I think he's gonna gas out, and I think uh, Battle takes it in the third round. So yeah. Um, oh, sorry about that. Next fight, Sam Alvey versus Phil Hawes. I don't know if I'm going to break this down or not. It's actually really stylistically compelling fight to me. You got Megatron, Phil Hawes. Now, I'll give Phil Hawes one thing. I love the nickname Megatron. Big Transformer fan right here. But <laughs> um, besides that, I do not like Phil Hawes at all. I think he's completely overrated. Um, I really wish I would have picked Chris Curtis. I, you know, I was rooting for Chris Curtis to knock him out. Uh, on my live if you re-watch my live stream but um but i actually did not pick chris curtis sadly but i was gonna pick deron win and i think deron win would have fucking knocked him out to oblivion this guy legitimately has no chin he good hands i give him one thing i, I don't want to be mean to him I, uh, I actually don't think he's a bad fighter he's just not durable um you know He's really good offensively with the striking. Uh, defensively, he I wouldn't say he's bad, but you touch him once. and if, like That's the thing about fighting. Like People say, oh, you got to work on your defense. It's not about the defense sometimes. like You're going to get touched eventually. Like Floyd Mayweather, or he got touched. He did. He got touched a few times. you know. But he was defensively aware. But sometimes you have to at least be able. you, you got to come in there thinking, yeah, I'm going to get touched once. It's not, I'm not going to leave out there unscathed. All right? He's not going to just not punch me you know <laughs> like so you gotta be able to take a punch and i don't know if phil can take a fucking punch man and that's the thing like it just it looks like i don't know if it's a mental thing like he comes in there thinking like i can't get hit or i'm gonna fall i don't know if um fucking julian marquez is fucking raped his brain into shutting down anytime he takes any kind of damage i don't know what it is man it's weird like it's a weird thing with him but um he's just not durable like he's a big strong guy really good wrestler good hands like legitimately like I, I give him he has really good boxing you know i like the way he throws his offensive combinations um it's really really nice but uh he was lighting chris curtis up like real talk and all chris curtis did was land a fucking i think lead hook or rear hook and he was on skates he was done he was done so so um yeah it, it is what it is uh, I'm Sam Alvey's actually somewhat durable. That's the thing. Like Alvey might get knocked out or fucking hoed sometimes, but you know both guys lost to Julian Marquez, and Sam Alvey got choked out unconsciously by Marquez. Sam Alvey has a really good right hand. He actually has a win over Rashad Evans. Um, I I think I think Alvey catches him. I really do. I, I might be reaching right here, and I could be wrong. Uh, but, uh, fuck it. I mean, Phil, like, honestly, even if I'm wrong, I'm still on the right side. Like, Phil Hawes is not good. He will lose. <laughs> like, he's not, I, I shouldn't say he's not good. He's a good, I just, oh, man, I feel bad for saying this. Because when you look at him overall, he's actually a decent fighter, right? But, um, uh, if I'm being really honest, he's not going, he's not winning the belt. So that's what I mean, Right. So it's I think Phil Hawes is an instant instant fade. Um, obviously, you know he beat Sam Alvey, and maybe you you know the fucking bookies you know put him up at like plus one thousand against another dude, and he fucking gets KO'd, and you make a ton of money. But like you know, um, or not plus one thousand, minus one thousand. My bad. Um, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, I just think. Uh, I think Alvi should KO him. I think Alvi should fucking knock his ass out, man. I, I'm going to take Alvi by, <laughs> by first round KO. He's on a really bad fight skid. He hasn't won a fight in forever. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'll... And, you know, the odds aren't that bad, man. They, they're really not. He's just a moderate dog. And, and Phil Hawes is a moderate favorite. So, I think Alvi can actually get this done. I really, I really do. And I think they know he can get it done. So, uh, yeah, Alvi by first round KO, man. All day, every day. Uh, <laughs> gotta go with smiling Sam Alvey here. And Sam Alvey, we trust, man. Uh, Shavkat Ramanov, I don't know if actually I'm not gonna break that fight down. I think I don't. I don't think I need to break down a Phil Haas fight. <laughs> Shavkat Ramanov versus Carlson Harris, a fight I did actually break down. Really, really great fight here. Go check out the breakdown. But I gotta take Rachmanov here by decision. Um, I, I'll give a summary of what I said in the breakdown, man. Just Rachmanov is just a little better everywhere than Carlson Harris. Carlson Harris is a great fighter. He's proved me wrong. If he gets this done, 
uh, I'll be forever humbled. Uh, this one, I, I just really do think Carlson Harris does not win this fucking fight. If he proves me wrong, good on him. And it is what it is. But yeah, Rachmanov is just better than him everywhere. I just, in every area besides, I guess, power. That's what Carlson has, is legit knockout power. So it is what it is. Um, or maybe Impa's just chin. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Shafkat should win this. Shafkat by decision. Uh, but go check out the breakdown. In the co-main event, apparently, Puna Holly Sariano versus Nix Maximov. Uh, I was not impressed with Nick's last fight. You know, you just consider this fucking phenom on the ground. And, oh, he beat a fucking heavyweight and this and that. And uh, you know, all that rah-rah. But, uh, yeah, Puna Holly Sariano by fucking K TKO or KO in the second round. I think Puna's going to fucking murder this dude. Um, Puna has really good wrestling. And, uh... Yeah, I think Nick's going to get fucking flatlined. And yeah, he lost to Brendan Allen, but it's Brendan Allen. You know, Brendan Allen, when Brendan Allen's on, he's a top 15 middleweight. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. You can say whatever you want. The guy beat Kevin Holland, but finished him too in the, I think, in the first round? I think he was in the first round. Subbed him. So, um, I think Puna is still the prospect that we all think he is. Uh, and I think he gets another fuck. He knocked out Dusko, right? Like, let's not forget that, man. Dusko to the board, like, When Dusko was the the prospect, too, that everyone thought was going to be somebody, he knocked him the F out. Taught him about fucking defense and keeping your fucking hands up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Taught him a lot of lessons in that fight. Puna's going to knock this dude out, man. And he's a boxing heavy dude. You know, Brendan Allen exposed Puna for not, you know, throwing any kind of kicks and just expose him for being boxing heavy and just throwing haymakers and the body kicks were there i don't think nick's gonna throw any body kicks or leg kicks or anything so yeah uh i'm i'm gonna be taking puna by second round tko i think maybe nick might get a takedown and save himself from getting ko'd in the first round i think he gets fucking finished uh in the second in the main event jack fucking hermanson versus sean strickland uh i love this fucking fight i think this is probably the best uh spot on the card for me personally i think jack hermanson is getting royally disrespected i've never seen this before um and yeah i it, it's insane uh sean strickland is a crackhead dope fiend in the corner of the street all right if you expect me to pick a crackhead dope fiend in the middle of the street over a legit mixed martial artist that has legit fucking wins. Yeah, I know. He, he fucking beat Uriah Hall. I twitching ass, right? Like that fight was goddamn. Oh my god. I, I bro, re watching that Uriah Hall fight, like it makes me want to fucking punch a goddamn hole in the wall. I don't know what Uriah was doing in there, man. Like, what the fuck, bro? But, um, uh, yeah. Uh, Sean, man, not Sean. Jack Hermanson is gonna sub this dude in the third round. Go check my breakdown on it. But man, it's it's crazy, man. Like people are acting like fucking Mar what Marvin Vittori did to Jack Hermanson is repeatable. Like, no, you're not Marvin fucking Vittori. Yeah, you train with the guy, but doesn't mean you are him. All right. But um, it is what it is, man. Crackhead, dope fiend, Sean Strickland, um, is getting fucking destroyed. You can post. Your fucking videos of UK on people and sparring and all your sparring clips, but uh, you're gonna get guillotine fucking subbed in the third round. Fucking Jack Hermanson all day. Fuck that. Yeah, like that. It's insane. The disrespect is crazy from my boy Jack the Joker. Uh, Joker season all day. Um, and yeah, and Jack Hermanson we trust, man. Fucking that is crazy. And dude, man, Jack striking isn't that bad. So. Um, he's actually getting better in it, and I think he's going to show it off. And I think he's going to get a guillotine choke in the third round. Sean Strickland is going to look like the same guy that lost to Ponzi Nibio. Look like the same guy that lost to fucking Zaleski Dos Santos. Look like the same guy that almost got fucking murdered in that motorcycle accident. It's fucking over. Uh, goodbye and good night. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> I know I talk a lot of shit, but uh, that's hey, that's the eBay fight prediction experience. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, go follow me on my Twitter and my Instagram. Uh, my homie's probably fucking pissed off at me for stealing his room. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, guillotine sub uh, for my boy Jack. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. And I don't know uh, what else. Oh yeah, subscribe. Go click the notification button, like, comment. Share. Let's get this eBay Fire Protection Nation growing. Love y'all. And goodbye. See y'all.